people either visiting the Florida Keys or just recently moved to the Florida Keys, how to fish the Florida Keys patch reefs. So the patch reefs run all along the Florida Keys. Back in my day, I used a commercial bully net for lobster all up in the Summerlin Key, Big Torch Key area. I used to live on this little island called Geiger Key. I think that's, yep, right here, Geiger Key. Used to live there. Good times. Now I live up here in Key Largo. I fish all these patch reefs sometimes three or four times a week. In this video, I'm just going to go over the best weather for fishing the patch reefs, kind of what to look for and what days you should be going out, where to find the patch reefs, and actually what to look for in terms of finding a good patch reef, what to look for and what not to look for. Then we're going to go over how to ch how to anchor, how to chum, how to find fish. If the fish aren't on your patch reef, um, how you can move and then find the fish. Then we'll finish it all off with what rigs to use and what bait to use. I guess we'll start off talking real quick about the weather. I know some of y'all come down to the Florida Keys on vacation and you book this vacation months ahead. So you can't really pick the weather. You might have bad weather, you might have really windy weather, maybe it's stormy, but you can't predict the weather. This is what I do. So me personally, if it's blowing less than 10 or 12 miles an hour, um, especially if it's blowing offshore winds and it's flat out, the, those are usually the days where I'll run offshore. I'll run out here to the Isla Mirada Humps, Maybe I'll go out to Floyd's while I'll do some sword fishing. If it's blown out, that lays the seas down. And those days I tend to go offshore. The days that I usually go on the patch race is if it's blown a little higher, 12 to 16, 17 mile an hour winds. It might be a little choppy to go offshore. I only have a 24 foot boat. I try not to run offshore if it's um, gonna be too choppy or if there's a storm brewing. If you see storms brewing and you don't wanna get caught offshore in a storm, the patch reefs is a great option because you're very close to land. So if a storm does come, you're usually only about two or three miles from land and you can quickly jet in to your marina. I might be a little spoiled but if it's blowing more than 18 miles an hour, I won't go offshore. And I also won't really go on the patch reefs because the patch reefs can whip up some pretty decent little waves, especially right on the reef's edge. Anywhere between this reef and land is usually decently calm, even on windy days, this whole area. But then where these reefs pop up, the waves kind of push up over them and it can create these, like I know that it gets really shallow here up to like five or 10 feet here. And the, the waves kind of break on these, these reefs a little more. So when it's really windy, I'll either stay at home or maybe do some backcountry fishing up here in the uh, Everglades, up in Flamingo, a lot of good red fishing here. That's how I decide if I'm going to fish the patch reefs or not. If you're in a really small boat and it's flat out, patch reefs is a great option for you. If you're in a medium-sized boat, 22 to 26 foot, 28 foot boat, and it's a little windy, the patch reefs is a great option for you. And if you're down on vacation and you don't have many options, I just I would just suggest take your boat out, go to the patch reefs. If it's too wavy, you can always turn around. But never push your luck, you know, try to stay safe. But for the most part, fish in the patch reefs, 90% of the year, you're going to have a good time on the patch reefs. It's a pretty safe bet. December, January, February, March, those are probably the worst months to be in the Keys in terms of windiness. There are some days that are very flat and calm during those months. But overall, it's pretty windy and going offshore is usually too much. And this is where the patch reef fishing really comes into play. So let's move on to where to actually find the patch reefs. So the patch reefs are located off the land or off the islands and they're in these. Okay, so here you can see some patches. Um, here's some patch reefs here. They look just how they sound. Patch reefs, it's patches. Um, I'm very familiar with the Key Largo area. And so like, look at this, this is just a big pile of patches. That's a big patch reef. 
here's patches. This is a nice patch reef, patch reef, kind of a patch reef. Um, that looks like a shallow reef with some patches around it. This right here could be good to fish or here's a couple patches. One, two, three, four, five, five patches. That, that could be okay. Um, shallow reef. Here's some patches. Okay. You'll notice usually it's a black dot with white around it. What these are, they're usually coral heads or piles of rocks um, with a lot of life growing on them. And then around them, there'll be sand. Mutton snapper, yellowtail snapper, grunts, porgies, uh, grouper, they all love this. So out here you see these are not patch reefs. These are like grassy, sandy slits. So not patch reefs. Um, yeah, none of this is patch reef. That's not patch reef. This is not patch reef. Let's keep, let's keep looking. That, that looks, that's, I would consider this a patch reef. Yep. You have one little patch there. That's a patch. Here's some dense patches. Then you have like an overall rock reef here structure. Um, that kind of looks like a little patchy. It looks shallow. I probably wouldn't go out to these spots. I like very well-defined patch reefs. There, this looks like a nice, that's a cool looking patch reef right there. Um, here's some patch reefs. You know, so that's that's kind of the Key Largo, Tavernier area. We can look down here at, um, let's look at Marathon. Okay, so this is kind of patchy looking here. The East Washerwoman Shoal. Um, I don't think I've ever been there. This looks like a couple patches out here. That's a patch reef here. Um, these look like patches, yep, patches. Uh, this is reef. You can see these are reef structures, but these are not patch reefs. Um, patch reefs are very well-defined circles with rings around them, uh, with sand around them. So I would consider this a patch reef. Boom, boom. A couple little patches there, a couple big ones. That looks good to me. Normally what I do is I'll try to find a couple patch reefs. I plan on targeting all of them on a trip. If the fish aren't biting, you're gonna wanna move from one patch reef to the other. Now we'll talk about that in a second. But first let's talk about how to anchor on a patch reef and then how to chum and fish it. Where's that one? Okay, I like this area. This looks like a good spot for explanations. So if you were to, actually let's go, let's use this defined area of patch reef. If you wanted to fish this patch reef area right here and the current was running northwest. So let's say the current was running from here to here. It's running towards land, going towards land, northwest. Where would you anchor? You would want to anchor where your chum is going over the patch reef. So if the current is running northwest and going this way, you're gonna to wanna to anchor over here. So that way when you put your chum out, the chum goes with the current and drifts over the patch reef. All the fish on the patch reef will get into your chum slick and make their way to your boat. Now you wanna make sure you do not anchor on the actual patch reef. If you were to go right on top of this patch reef and drop your anchor, not only are you going to probably destroy some reef, probably break some corals, but the fish are gonna get a little wary. Um, you might spook them a little bit. The big mutton snapper are definitely gonna probably leave the area when you do that. And also on top of that, if you hook into a nice fish and you're anchored right over all the rocks, that fish is gonna go right into a rock and break you off. So what you wanna do is anchor on the outside of the patch reef depending on where the current is. So if the current is going offshore, you're gonna to wanna to anchor right here. If the current is going inshore, you're gonna to wanna to anchor out here. If the current's going this way, you wanna anchor here. If the current's going down, you're gonna to wanna to anchor here. 
Hopefully that makes sense. But you want to anchor off. I usually like to have the boat about 50 feet from the actual rocks. So I'll, I'll, if I'm drifting this way, I'll usually throw the anchor down here. And then usually my boat will get caught in right about here. And if I want to get a little closer to the rocks, I can always let out more anchor line, which gets me closer. But generally, I don't like to get too close to the actual rocks because I think it spooks the fish a bit when you have a boat bobbing up and down right next to the rocks. And I like to have my chumps like kind of peacefully creep over these patch reefs and draw the fish out of the rocks and the fish will come out here to the edge and they'll kind of hover at the back of the boat and then you can cast on them. General rule of thumb, once I anchor up, I put a chum bag out right away. That's the very first thing I do is put a chum bag out. I'll just let it sit. I'll get my rigs ready. I'll get my rods ready. Maybe I'll have a drink, but I'll just let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. Hopefully by then the fish should be in the chump slick eating a little bit. If you put a, a bait back, you should start getting nibbles. If you put a chum bag out, 20, 30 minutes goes by, there's no fish, you're putting bait out, you're not getting any nibbles. At that point, I would suggest moving. Patch reef hopping is something I do a lot because let's say this is my top secret best fishing spot ever. It might be great for a month or two, and then all of a sudden you might go there one day and not get a bite. And it might be like that for a month or two until something changes. So fish move, fish act differently at different times of the year. They're constantly changing. I could give someone my very best fishing spots and they might come home without any fish. And that's just kind of part of fishing. So if, if I anchor here, put a chum bag out, no bites after 30 minutes, maybe I'll move over here. If same situation, maybe I'll move here, I'll move here. Um, I'll, I just bounce around. It's important to bounce around until you find the fish. If you're persistent and you're bouncing around a lot, nine times out of 10, you will find the fish, especially on the patch reefs. So now you're anchored here. You got your chum bag out and you see some fish starting to show up in your chum slick, probably yellowtail, maybe some snapper, probably some grunts, uh, hopefully not too many Bermuda chubs. Hopefully the ballyhoo show up because ballyhoo are great bait. It's time to start fishing. So what rigs and what bait should you be using when fishing the patch reefs? I tend to run a three rod setup if I'm fishing by myself or with one other person. If you're fishing with more people, the more rods in the water, obviously the better, better chance of um, catching a fish. But if I'm fishing by myself or with my lady or just one other person, I try to run three rods and I try to fish all different levels. So the first rod, I'll move over to redwhiteandblueoutdoors.com so I can show you the rigs that we're gonna be using. So the first rod, I wanna fish the bottom. I always have one rod on the bottom at all times. And for fishing the bottom, the knocker rig is an excellent option. On a knocker rig, I'll put a, a butterfly ballyhoo, a butterfly cigar minnow, a whole squid or chunked bait, a cut squid, really any anything. You know, whatever you got in your cooler, put on that hook, throw it out there and see if it gets a nibble. And don't be afraid to change up your baits. If you put a butterfly ballyhoo out and you don't get a bite after 20 minutes on that ballyhoo, bring it in and try a piece of squid. Maybe that's just what the fish want that day. So for fishing the bottom, you wanna have one rod on the bottom. The knocker rig is a great option or a classic option would be a snapper rig, a very similar concept. Depending on the current, normally I can get away with the one ounce just fine, maybe even a half ounce if it's just a very calm, nice, beautiful day. If the current is ripping, I will go up to a two ounce. Generally, on the patch reefs, you won't ever need more than a two ounce. The two, the three ounce stuff, the heavier stuff, that's really if you're fishing 40, 50, 80 feet of water, then uh, you wanna go heavier. But on the patch reefs, you're only fishing about 15 to 30 feet of water, so you can keep it light. The grouper rig, similar to the snapper rig, is also a great option. It's just got a bigger, more sturdy hook, and it comes in much heavier sizes, three ounce to eight ounce. So that's my one rod setup, fishing the bottom. The second rod is going to have a live ballyhoo that I just drift out back. And for that, I use a stinger rig. 
For this stinger rig, I'll put the this first hook through the nose of the ballyhoo, and then I'll put the treble hook into the back of the ballyhoo. Keep it all in line and chuck them on out there and just keep feeding them line. My live ballyhoo will be swimming on the surface of the water anywhere from 100 to 150 feet behind the boat. I'll toss out the ballyhoo and I'll just keep feeding it line and just keep letting them go further and further away from the boat. This is a great setup to have because you never know what's gonna swim by and just smash your bait from the surface. Generally, I'll tend to catch a barracuda on this rig. I have seen mutton snapper come up and smack live bait on the surface. I've seen grouper do it. Big Ciro mackerel will come and just completely destroy this bait on the surface. I've even seen a sailfish come and grab a live ballyhoo off the surface while patchery fishing. The stinger rigs comes in your typical J hook, treble hook setup like this one in the pitcher. Great rig for kingfish. There's also different styles two J hooks or two treble hooks. So we got one rod fishing on the bottom with a knocker rig or a snap rig. Then we have one rod fishing the surface with a live ballyhoo using a stinger rig. And then our very third and our last rod, we're gonna set up with a freeliner rig. Basically all a freeliner rig is, is mono leader to a hook. My very favorite for patchery fishing is either the 20 pound fluorocarbon circle hook or the 40 pound fluorocarbon circle hook. Put a piece of cut bait on here, a squid, a live pilchard. Cut barracuda is actually also really good. Put this bait right down where your chum bag is and just keep feeding line and let your bait drift back with the current to where the fish are. This bait's gonna be kind of suspended in the water column. It's not gonna be on the bottom and it's not gonna be on the surface. It's just gonna be kind of a couple or two, three feet under the surface. If the current's ripping really hard and your bait will not sink and stay on the surface, I would attach like a little one eighth or one fourth uh, snap on sinker just to give it a little weight so it stays a little bit under the water. And just keep feeding it line and letting it drift back. This is the rod that's always gonna be in your hand. Keep feeding it line, have your bail open, keep feeding it line, 50 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet, keep letting it go back. And at some point, a fish is gonna eat your bait and take off, and you're gonna see the line just shooting out of your spool. And that means a fish grabbed it and it's swimming away. Close your bail and get tight on that fish. If you let it go out 150 feet or more and you haven't got a hit, reel it in, reset, and try again. And that's the Freeliner rig setup. Hopefully, if you've never gone patchery fishing, that this video kind of gives you a little insight on what to look for. If you have any questions about patchery fishing, you can uh, leave, leave a comment below on this video. I'll get to them. I'll answer your questions. Hopefully, you can get out there and you can catch some fish on the patch reefs. Again, this is not patch reef right here. You'll notice it's like cobwebby, spider webby. This is not patch reef. This is almost patch reef reefy. Just looking around, looking around. Nope, oh, just sand, sand. Here we go, patch reefs. Very clear indicators when it's a, a black blob with a, uh, the white sand around it. Those are very clear indicators of patch reefness. Patch reefiness. <laughs> yeah, hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys come down to the Florida Keys, try out some patchery fishing. I'm gonna leave a link below this video to my written guide on how to patchery fish. And that guide also contains a ton of videos of me actually going out to the patch reefs and catching fish. So make sure you check the video description for those links. Thank you for watching. Make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button if you like the Red, White, and Blue Outdoors channel and you want to see more tutorials like this. I have a bunch of fishing technique tutorials coming out and uh, rigging baits and even some hunting stuff. So um, thanks for watching and cheers guys.